hello, hello everyone. Hello again. Um, if you've been following this Ozone series, you'd know that now, what are we, the fourth episode in, we have, we have a functional ozone generator. And we know it generates about 200 milligrams per hour of ozone when we're using air. We also have an oxygen cylinder that we can pump pure oxygen through it and get better yields. The efficiency is still roughly the same per amount of oxygen we put into it compared to air, but we can do the same reaction five times faster because we generate the ozone five times faster with uh, the pure oxygen. So that's what we know. The system works, but we haven't tried any actual reactions with it past titrations. So uh, we wanted to actually find a reaction we could test out the system with now that it's, it's mostly working. So I came across this in some papers, which is quite intriguing to me actually because what it's implying is that we can turn ammonium ions directly into nitrate ions of course if we're doing this in a vast excess of ammonium ions this nitrate is going to then you know when we boil everything off is going to form ammonium nitrate so it's a way of forming ammonium nitrate a chemical that is increasingly hard to get from ammonia just using air and electricity this is really a competitive technique, I suppose, that I've never seen before compared to a Birkeland air reactor, which is oxygen and nitrogen, so just air really. And you run that through, through a spark gap and you form um, NO2 and you bubble that through water and then you create nitric acid. Quite a difficult thing to get really, really good. I thought it might be interesting to try and see if we could do something a little bit better by directly going from ammonia to um, the nitrate ion. So we're going to be following a paper. It's about wastewater treatment. So I'm not really sure how applicable it's going to actually be. In wastewater treatment, you care about like, you know, one milligram per liter, whereas we actually want decent quantities of this stuff. You know, we, we don't really care about parts per million of nitrate. So, so yep, it's from 1975. And what they use is they use buffered solution of ammonium chloride as their ammonium ion source. We could do that but the problem then becomes how do we know we've got ammonium nitrate at the end because if we boil everything off then we're still left with like ammonium chloride where the chloride ions go so we'll just have a mix of ammonium chloride and ammonium nitrate and we won't really know if it's worked too well or not and for that reason as well there, there's a few other papers other reactants we could put into the system to catalyze this reaction notably bromide is one that comes up a lot so bromide will help the ozone react with the ammonium ion. If we then put bromide into the system, you know, we're generating ammonium bromate at the end as well. And then that's, you know, that's primary explosive really. And that's going to mix in with our ammonium nitrate. And, um, you know, that's always a bit of a worry, but also, you know, it's, it's going to be an impurity in our ammonium nitrate. So my thought for this experiment we can do is if we start with pure just ammonia solution, NH3, oh, this is why people don't write with their left hand, eh, NH3 doesn't matter, you know what ammonia is. Then that way, we're starting with just liquids and ammonia dissolved in the liquid. If we boil everything down at the end, the only remaining solids should be the nitrite ion that we formed. So then straight away, we can tell if the reaction has worked or not, because if we get no solids, it hasn't worked. If we get some solids, it'll be easy to process because it should just be the ammonium nitrate. This is a little ambitious, but there's a couple of things that work for us and a couple of things that work against us. Even if this reaction worked at 100% efficiency, we still need four molecules of ozone to make, generate one nitrate molecule, right? So if you think about it, it's already pretty depressing because we know our ozone generator only generates oh, about 200 milligrams per hour. And we know that the efficiency overall of this process is actually pretty awful as well. Trying to turn an ammonium ion into a nitrate ion, I mean, you need, there's a lot of steps, you need to, you know, add three oxygen to it. Like there's a lot to do chemically. So this whole process is very inefficient as well. One of the things that does work for us though, using air, we will have a side product of nitrogen dioxide because we will have a lots of nitrogen obviously going through the system and we will generate some nitrogen dioxide, which will then go into the water to form nitric acid, which of course will react with ammonia to form ammonium nitrate. So actually our side product is also our main product. So we've actually got two avenues to form the ammonium nitrate. Either one of them could actually be the dominant process, but I'm hoping it's this one because otherwise we you know, there's no reason not to build a Birkeland air reactor. So I've got some concentrated ammonia solution already, and I'm just gonna get that out and start running some ozone through it. I'm sh oh, things are gonna get complicated. They always get complicated. It's, it's not an extraction in iVideo if it was just straightforward. Fucking. All right, so we've just got some water in there just to show that the system is all working fine. Chuck it on. Yeah, your ozone generator isn't plugged in, but that's a great bubbling rate. I don't think we'll have to stir that. So that should be all good. 
so what I've got here is I've got my big bottle of ammonia and we're going to be putting in uh, probably 200 mils, 250 mils into there. I've also installed a one-way valve here that was the one-way valve that came with the uh, the pump so when the pump turns off none of the ozone can go back through here and into the pump because that will shorten the pump's lifetime. Uh, I don't know how good this will be but at least it's not seeming like it's restricting the flow too much. Alright there's 150 mils in there so let's flick it on see what happens. Yeah that's alright. It's foaming a bit though. Is it going to stop foaming? No. Okay let's turn it off. <laughs> alright let's uh, half that volume. I think it's holding steady. I think that's on the minimum pump setting so we can crank it up. Uh, and that is going to overflow. Alright, we're ready to go. The timer is set so that it turns on for three minutes then off for three minutes. I still haven't got the cooling system installed so perhaps that will be on for too long. Um, but we'll just have to monitor that. Yeah. So it's done the on for three, off for three for half an hour now. Oh, there it goes, it turns off. So, it's gotten warm, but not not overly hot. So I reckon, well, oh, it's a little bit bad, but I reckon with the cooling, we might be able to push towards four on and then two off, and then it's on for two thirds of the time rather than half. And that will help us out a lot. But I'm pretty happy with what we've achieved today. We've got the system just running. We're gonna have to run this for many more hours before we get a decent yield out of it. So I'm, I'm just gonna pack it up for today. We'll run it another day for some more hours. Hopefully the cooling system turns up. What's interesting is that occasionally when there's a big bubble burst you can see a little bit of a cloud of white smoke come off it. <laughs> I don't really know what that is. It's, you know, it's easy to say oh it's ammonia but why would an ammonia look like that? I, I think it might be a dust of ammonium nitrate. Like ammonium nitrate in a very small concentration would uh, pull water from the air and create this kind of smoke cloudy effect I think. So signs that it's working although how much of that we're actually capturing? That nah, could also just be the ammonia gas coming out of solution looking cloudy. But the bubbling is getting very annoying because I want to be able to immerse this thing all the way down the bottom so we get the biggest gas capture. But as we can see, even if we half immerse it, the stuff starts to bubble all the way up to the top of the jar. So maybe I should change container or something. All right, I've swapped out that jar for a beaker here. It allows that foam to build up uh, a lot and us to uh, crank the flow rate up to maximum. So you see a lot of a lot of gas is being trapped there in the bubbles for a very long time, which I think is just as good as having a very long path length. I could be wrong. While this is going on, I've got 100 mils of ammonia solution that's just boiling down. I haven't added anything to this. What we expect is this to boil dry and there be no residue left over because both the ammonia and the water should just boil off. But it's good to just confirm this because, you know, it's my bottle of ammonia that's been sitting there for a while, so it could have some crap in it. Hopefully there'll be nothing in there. And then that way when we boil this solution down and we get some solid out, we know the solid is only there because we've added the ozone. Alright, here's the end result of the ammonia and ozone solution that I boiled down. Get this black shit. Is it tar? I mean, I nearly go so far as to say it's tar. There's fucking always more tar. And I wasn't actually very surprised by this because this is the result of the 200 milliliters that we boiled down of just the pure ammonia solution that I had in the bottle. And what's this? What's all this residue? At first I was pretty confused because I was like, wow, come on, it can't be that impure. But then I thought back, I thought, what's the history of this ammonia? If we think back to quite a while ago, this happened. And so it sat there for a few months, and when I went to get it out, it looks like this. <laughs> what this has done, the ammonia has hydrolyzed the um, ester linkages and made ammonium terephthalate um, with the bottle. Now the bottle is very, very weak, and I'm lucky I caught it because I think another week or two and this bottle would have split. So this is ammonium uh, terephthalate. It's obviously been pulled from the uh, bottle it was stored in. I didn't know that was in there. Yeah, so we can't use this ammonia for this experiment. So these hours have been wasted. I'm not ready to give up. So what we have to do is we have to make a pure ammonia solution now. And if we make one from scratch using our own ammonia generator and distilled water, then we can be absolutely certain that there's nothing in there.
Come on, get out of there. Get, go, go. Get out of here. Come on. Come on, matey. Thank you. Yep. All right, so this here is 100 mils of nice pure ammonia solution that I just made. And I'm gonna add a little bit more distilled water to it just to bump up the volume without dropping the ammonia content. All right, so a couple of updates. I've finally got a fan here. I actually just got sick of waiting for these shitty eBay fans that are obviously never coming. So I just went to like the supermarket and got this for like 10 bucks. It doesn't have its own like power source. So you can either plug it, it's just USB connected. So you either plug it to a one amp transformer here into the power. But the problem is doing that here, that means that because this is all connected to the timer here, it means that it has its off cycle then the fan also turns off, but we really want the cooling fan to go continuously throughout all the time. So we can have something like this, which is just like a, a shitty um, backup battery. Put that there, and then into here, get the USB the right way around. And then flick it on. That runs pretty nicely. Got this hole in the box. I was gonna film me using power tools, but I'm glad I didn't because I made a fucking mess of it. But anyway, that's a big hole there. And then there's just some holes here. Flows nicely over this transformer. So the cooling system is kind of in place now, but um, I have some bad updates. <laughs> so I was looking at this transformer because I was wondering maybe um, I could heat sink it better. And I was just wondering what internally was getting hot. So I took the, the two screws holding it together out and I took this plate off, and uh, be, be warned. <laughs> Have a look at that. <laughs> I think I can tell what's getting hot. No surprise, it's that big, well, the tiny transformer that's doing a lot of work. The insulation that has just absolutely melted off this thing. Um, so the circuit still works. I don't know how for how much longer. But anyway, yeah, uh, you know, this thing needs cooling because it's... It's obviously just internally melting. Uh, we still have its on off cycle, but at least we cool it down. <laughs> All right, we're on to the, the next phase, which is boiling it down. It probably had around seven hours of ozone. So it probably had, you know, maybe 11 to 12 hours of 50% on. And then, well, in the later hours, I actually changed it up to be a higher percentage, more about 75% on. So roughly about six to seven hours worth of ozone. I was gonna run it more, but I actually had a bit of an accident. I, was, I put in that freezer brick and it knocked the hose out of the pump and it just sprayed green water just everywhere while this was running and while that was running. And it nearly was a lot worse because it had the lid kind of half on, so it didn't get on the electronics, it got on the lid. I had this covered with the uh, plastic wrap, so none actually got in there. And this hot glassware got sprayed with water too, so it could have easily smashed and it could have destroyed the heating mantle too. But no glass cracked, the heating mantle seems to be fine. And for all those people who consistently ask me, why did you dye a condensed water green? It was for exactly this circumstance, because it was all this green water on top, but I couldn't have known if I got any water in there if it wasn't dyed. But the fact that it didn't go green meant that no water actually got in there right because otherwise i would have just suspected that water had gone in and it was easy to clean up when it was all green and anyway anyway um hopefully this boils down and we get a little bit of the ammonium nitrate or just a little bit of solid at all all right it's just finished boiling down and are you ready for this are you ready for the uh the vast quantities of crystals of ammonium nitrate we've got mate have a look at this yes definitely looks like all the hours that i've put into this project have been worthwhile I love science I'm gonna try and see if I can get like a single crystal out if I maybe extract it with some ethanol hot ethanol and then cool it down maybe maybe we might get a single crystal of ammonium nitrate all right here's our ethanol extracts it's very yellow and it's got a tiny bit of shit down the bottom. Ammonium nitrate has a moderate solubility in ethanol. It's like three to four grams per 100 mils. Reasonable to think that maybe if this is saturated with ammonium nitrate at just above room temperature, because I did heat it slightly, uh, that when I cool this down in the freezer, it'll get down to about negative 20 odd, um, that maybe some will crystallize out. And here's our yield once it's all cooled down. Yes, there's a little bit of sludge down there at the bottom, but there's also small crop of white crystals. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's not very convincing, but there is a small amount of uh, very soluble 
material in here other than the, the, the weird sludgy tar in here there is some crystals is it ammonium nitrate uh, i mean probably but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter i suppose because there's just fuck all of it in there so the video doesn't even really work as a proof of concept there's just really not that much there because you could say that even all that amount here just from the byproduct of the nitrogen dioxide so there could be no ozone or ammonia interactions for it as far as we can tell yeah so let me know what your uh, most failed experiment was in the comments to uh, make me feel better okay what thing have you spent the most time on for the least rewards um for me, that would be high school. But um, <laughs> no, uh, like what, like maybe, maybe we'll limit to science experiment. What science experiment have you done that you've spent the most time on for like the, the lowest yield? <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for watching. I thought this was fun. We had a go. <laughs> Keep trying to justify it. Yep. All right. See you later. Thanks for watching. See you next time.